Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I have the B-Link M1 Mini PC to do a review on. A few weeks ago, I did a review on the B-Link BT3 Pro. I paid my own money for it. I was actually getting it for a friend because her computer broke. And B-Link actually contacted me after seeing that video, I guess, and asked me if I wanted to review the M1. So I figured, why not? I want to make this perfectly clear that B-Link is not paying me for doing this review. They simply sent me the box so I can make a video on it. I'm going to tell you guys if it's good or if it sucks. So let's get into it. Inside of the box, we get the B-Link M1 Mini PC, a mounting bracket so you can mount it to the back of your monitor or television, a 12 volt, 2.5 amp power supply, a one foot HDMI cable, and a three foot HDMI cable. It also comes with a user manual. There's not much useful information inside of it though. B-Link does make two versions of this. This one is the eight gigabytes of RAM version. It has an Apollo Lake, N3450 quad core CPU clocked at 1.1 gigahertz, but it does turbo up to 2.2. Intel HD 500 graphics clocked at 750 megahertz. This is the eight gigabyte model. 64 gigabytes of internal storage, an M.2 expansion slot inside, and this one runs Windows 10. So I've been itching to test a higher end CPU than the old Atom X5, and this definitely is a lot higher end. It's still a small, low-powered CPU, but this thing might be really good for emulation. You're going to have to stay tuned to the channel because I'm going to do a full video on emulation with this Apollo Lake and the Intel HD 500 graphics. On the back of the unit, coming from the left to the right, we have the power button, the power input jack, one USB 3.0 port, HDMI, gigabit ethernet, and audio out. This is very similar to their AP34 mini PC, but this one has VGA out also. On the other side of the box, we have a full-size SD card slot and two USB 3.0 ports. I went ahead and took the top off the case so I could see the heatsink and make sure it did have an M.2 slot. It is advertised with one, and this one does have an M.2. The last one I did, the BT3 mini PC, was advertised with an M.2 but didn't have it. This is a fanless PC, so it's passively cooled by this heat sink, but it looks like it's going to do the job to keep it cool. So it looks like there could be a chance of the CPU throttling if this unit gets too hot, but I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. These are very low powered CPUs. Let's go ahead and test it out and see how it performs. I'm going to run some benchmarks, some video tests, and I'll also test crisis for the heck of it. All right, so let's check out some benchmarks. I just ran a few tests on this. I've actually had this unit for about three days now and been messing with everything. And I really do enjoy this. It's much more powerful than the X5, and I expected it to be. Instead of having the Intel 400 GPU, this has the Intel 500 GPU, which allows for better frame rates in games and better emulation all over the place. It just works much better than the old Atoms do. The first benchmark I ran was AN22, and we scored a 100,940. Not too bad for a small little Intel CPU. Now I have some 3D scores down here, some UX, some CPU, and some RAM if you want to pause it and take a look at those. But if we go to ranking, you can see the iPhone 6S does sit atop of this. You really can't compare these because those are ARM devices and this is an x86 device. They do run different benchmarks inside and run them in different ways, so you got to keep that in mind. The next benchmark I ran was Geekbench 4. For single core, we scored a 1,370, and for multi-core score, we scored a 4,077. The multi-core score is way higher than I thought it would be. I thought it would be in the 25 to 3,000 range, but seeing it at 4,000 really makes me think about these small CPUs and how far they're coming along. Every day, they're getting faster and faster. Next up was the Geekbench CL mark, and we scored a 7,572. Now on my bigger machines, I don't think I've ever run the OpenCL version of Geekbench 4, so I'm not sure how to compare this to other devices. Next up, I ran a SunSpider and I run this on all of my devices. This is a browser-based JavaScript benchmark. I'm using the built-in Edge browser because it does have an edge over Google Chrome with tests like this, but Google Chrome scored about a 340, lower is better. With Edge, we scored a 287.5 milliseconds. Lower is faster, so Edge does beat out Chrome. The last online benchmark I ran was Octane. This is Octane 2.0. As you can see, we scored a 9,558. To put this into perspective for you, for my viewers at least, the Raspberry Pi 3 scores anywhere from a 2,400 to a 3,400. So this is much faster. 
It's time to move on to some video playback test. I tested the built-in Windows 10 media player with 4K content. I tested YouTube and Netflix. Let's see how it performs. So I'm going to be using Big Buck Bunny 4K 60fps and 4K 30fps. This is the 60fps 4K version MP4 using the built-in Windows 10 media player. Buttery smooth. So this thing does 4K at 60fps pretty good. There are some formats that it will not handle as well as it does this MP4. But for the most part, a lot of people are only going to be watching 4K and 30 and it'll handle pretty much any format 4K 30fps. I went ahead and tested the 30 FPS version. If the 60 worked, the 30 is going to work even better. Next, I wanted to test some Netflix playback, and I'm sure it's going to handle it perfectly. There's not much I can do on here because of copyright and stuff like that, but we can do a quick clip. So in streaming 4K and stuff like that on Netflix, it's going to be a lower bit rate than that video I just showed you, the Big Buck Bunny, and I'm sure it'll handle it just fine as long as you have a good internet connection. Skip ahead a bit in this. I mean, this is 1080p. Works great. This box does have AC Wi-Fi, but I'm only hooked up to 2.4. We're going to try some 60 FPS 4K content on YouTube. I'll turn some stats for geeks on here. So one drop frame. That's normal in my experience from starting a video. We're going to go up to 4K and see what happens. Full screen it, get rid of this ad. And there we go. 4K 60 FPS streaming on a 2.4 gigahertz network, one drop frame so far. It looks beautiful. So it looks like this little Celeron can do video playback pretty good, either streaming or straight from a hard drive. Now I want to test some gameplay. One game I'm going to test, this is the last thing I'm doing in this video, is Crisis. So I know this is an old game, but I love testing it on these small, low-powered CPUs. Let's go ahead and start it up. So here's Crisis at 720p. I do have the FPS listed in the top left-hand corner. I tried 1080p, but it ran at about 10 FPS at full screen. Everything's on low also. So let's see how it performs at 720. So we're hitting 30 FPS in crisis on this Intel Celeron CPU in this small little PC. Pretty awesome if you ask me. So this will definitely slow down when there's explosions and more NPCs on screen, some firefights going on. It's going to slow down on you. I'm going to turn V-Sync on and just see if we can stabilize this because the tearing is killing me. I don't know if this is going to hurt or help us. And it hurt us a little bit. That's all right. I mean, 25 FPS. This isn't a game I'm going to play on here all the time. This is just a test I like to run. And as you can see, it is running. When you get into some real action in this game, it will be unplayable at this frame rate. I mean, we're at 25 now. There's nothing going on. I can see this dropping down to 5 to 10 FPS when there's a lot of explosions and NPCs on screen. So what I'm going to do now is lower the resolution, but I'm going to go into window mode and see how much stress it's putting on the CPU. All right, so we're in window mode. I have the CPU usage over on the right hand side and we went to 800 by 600. We're at 40 FPS now. So this will still lag out when there's a lot of stuff going on, like I said, about the 720p. 
But you should be able to play it if you wanted to. I'll do another video on just gameplay using this unit. I'll test out some Half-Life, some League of Legends, some World of Warcraft. If you have any other games you want to see playing on this CPU, let me know in the comments below. So it's really up to you if you're interested in a small computer like this. I'm going to leave links to Gearbest and Amazon down below. I like the box. It is a bit expensive for what you get, but it is a big improvement over the Atom X5 CPU. So that's a big plus for this little box here. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could hit that like button and subscribe for more great content. And I will have an emulation video using this PC coming up very shortly, hopefully in the next four days or so. I'll test the Dolphin emulator with GameCube and Wii, some Dreamcast, some Nintendo 64, and pretty much all the retro classics. Like always, thanks for watching.